So this London Grammar stuff on my album came out in the beginning of June. London Grammar is this hyped and praised phenomenon band. They play this sort of balladry music and uh, intelligent dream pop sort of music, let's call it that. As far as I'm not a super extreme ballads fan, I can appreciate a good consistent album of emotional songs. Plus, on the critically acclaimed debut record, If You Wait, they touched interesting patterns, they added a bit of trip hop, they flirted with less radio friendly as for the year of 2013 less radio friendly sounds and overall at the time London Grammar was my kind of type of indie pop music. The debut is indeed quite good but for me it got overshadowed by other similar sounding bands who might have started that aesthetic just a bit earlier. Anyway after that I wasn't really paying that much of attention to what was happening with the band but it's been a while. Now we have their sophomore four years into making and with this announced comeback huge next step for a band like this. I felt like this pause might be a good thing. They didn't really fall for that quick forced follow-up album they went away, they disappeared, and now there's Truth is a Beautiful Thing album, their second official sophomore release. I think the waiting did pay off in a way that they matured quite a bit. Even if we're talking song themes, the first album to me, the debut album, is this first big tragic heartbreak story album. It's very youth shattered, very dramatic, melodramatic and very fragile. This new album though, I guess it's about growing up a little bit, understanding that the world around you might be fucked, probably fucked, but it's still quite a beautiful place with lots of interesting individuals who want to start something romantically involved with you. And the problem is that after this first heartbreak and after all the mistakes, all the fears, all the hopes and ideas shattered, you find yourself in the position of questioning everything and being a bit anxious about your current um, romantic situation or about anything, really. Young adulthood is a sick face. On the album they question trust, angst, heartache. You know, it's still quite melodramatic, but to me, all the songwriting on this second album seemed more serious and more interesting creative-wise. They also matured in the production, though here I'm not entirely sure that it's their effort and their reward, because the list of producers on the thing is quite impressive. Very major pop hits driven. Two huge names are, of course, Tom Elmhurst and Greg Kirsting. Though I thought that the best instrumentals and the best production, the most interesting tracks, came from Paul Epworth and Myriad, Myriad, My Riot, not sure. Some of which were co produced by London Grammar themselves, so of course they also responsible for that. It's all good, but this album, four years into making, fans are waiting, fans are anticipating. I suppose that London Grammar could reconnect with their strengths from the first release and improve them, which they did. But I'd be okay with 10 or even 8 quality tracks of this. Instead, Truth is a Beautiful Thing is this very long, monotonous album with quite a little filler, which is disappointing because they took such a big break and they're very talented people and they also collaborated with those big producers. Quality over quantity, always, but I guess it's not the case on this release, unfortunately. There's another issue with the band, for me. It always has been a vocally centred band, to an extreme level. Hannah Reed has a beautiful, powerful, amazing, rich voice, which made the band sound popular in the first place, I think. And that incredible voice dominates over everything else in London Grammar, making the band seem and sound more like Hannah Reed and two other dudes on the background. That's why I think the remixes of their hits are so popular, because it has Hannah's voice, what else do you need? I've met people who didn't even know that those remixes are remixes and their original tracks are those moody, sad, heartbreaking slow ballads. This is upsetting for you because both Dot and Dan, they're very talented musicians. And if you listen carefully to some of the instrumentals on the W, I'll say it again, it has some amazing electronic moments, very good acoustic moments. On this new album as well, but it all kind of gets lost underneath. 
I wouldn't be surprised to hear a couple of acapellas on the next release if they continue to center the vocals that much. It's not that wrong, but I feel like it's a little bit unfair. Truth is a beautiful thing, it's not groundbreaking. It's on a more safe side. They do progress, but there's still too many similarities in tone and shape to If You Wake from 2013. It's not exhausting, I guess again, thanks to the long break before this comeback, but this sound, as far as this is London grammar at their best, classic London grammar, it feels a bit outdated for 2017. I could see it banging in 2015 though, or especially in 2014. Hell yes. But now it seems like the trio and producers, they play the safe card hard. If you don't give a fuck about that sound fashion and 2017 bullshit, that's fine, that's great. Does this album sound as timeless and as emotionally fulfilled as their debut one? No, unfortunately not. It's stuck somewhere in between their originally made famous sound and then progressing just a bit so this new record wouldn't sound exactly the same or too similar. For die-hard London grammar fans, and for diehard fans of this kind of music, this is actually amazing. I can imagine writing in the comments if they would experiment just a bit more and go further with their sound, bring some new influences to their atmospheric music. Fresh ideas, I'd love that. It could not work really, but at least I, I'd be full of respect for them for trying. But here on that album, it seems like they don't want it or and just don't need it. If the sound of this album works for you, it's amazing, congrats. But it didn't particularly do for my taste. It doesn't mean that the album is terrible and that all the tracks are filler. There are no particular hits on there, as on their debut in my opinion, but there's still quite a few beautiful songs. Wild Eyed is one of my favourites and probably the most debut reminiscent one from all of my favourites. Or Woman or Men, of course, perhaps um, a hit single contestant for me. I love the lyricism here, I love how Hannah stays in this kind of mellow, chill lane of vocal delivery. The chorus reminds me of my favourite Florence Welsh. I know, I know, not the most original comparison. And her latest amazing Florence and Machine album. The guitar solo by the end stands out beautifully. It's a great track actually, probably my top one um, from there. Bones of Ribbon is also very nice. It feels something so positive, so warm, so hopeful. From this track though it's still very autumn melancholic toned i love the drum beat the piano the simpler guitar lines too hannah's higher toned vocals are very beautiful here too as always and that grandiose finale of this song oh my god it, it sounds beautiful finally the pre-ultimate leave the war with me track from all four favorites probably the least favorite one i'm not really sure what's drawing me in in this track. I guess the fact that after the fill is in the middle of the album, it's just nice to hear something like that by the end of it. It's very refreshing. There are a few other decent tracks, including the pre-released singles, but that's it. And it's not bad. I personally like four tracks out of 11, one of which, or woman or man, is definitely one of the greatest slower singles from this year so far. This album is okay. In my opinion, it's far from perfect, but it's also, it's like, it's too beautiful, too emotional and too majorly produced to be considered really bad. It's not a bad release. And it definitely grows on you with more listens. And again, if you're a fan of this kind of music, it will definitely be maybe even one of your top albums of the year. London Grammar continue to write very gorgeous songs, but next time, I really want them to stop playing the safe card and try at least a little bit to crawl out of the comfort zone and do something radical, like London grammar level radical. What are your thoughts on this release? Share in the comments down below. Also, don't forget to like and to share this video and to subscribe to our channel to watch other videos we did. Follow us on social media. We love to meet new people and talk with them about music and about all the other things. Do it, let's talk, let's meet each other. Twitter, Facebook, symbol, bring it on. We hope you're getting into the festival atmosphere and not dying from the summer hit. Stay cool, stay healthy, stay hydrated. Lots of new videos to come. Peace out.